now the Kids at Hope Pledge. As an adult and a treasure hunter, I am committed to search for all the talents, skills, and intelligence that exist in all children and youth. I believe all children are capable of success, no exceptions. Thank you. This time I will open the public hearing. We have the proposed adoption of the charter school renewal contract for the Renaissance Charter School at St. Lucie. Are there any in the audience that wish to speak to this? Seeing none come forward, Madam Superintendent, we'll receive your recommendation. Yes, ma'am. I recommend the board adopt the proposed charter renewal contract with Renaissance Charter School at St. Lucie as presented. Thank you. Board members, we have the recommendation. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Moved by Dr. Mills. Second. Second by Ms. Hilson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 3-0. And at this point, we will move to our consent agenda. Board members, we have the agenda before us. Could I hear a motion to adopt it as presented? So moved. Moved by Ms. Hilson. Second. Second by Dr. Mills. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 3-0. Board members, are there any conflicts that you need to declare at this time before we move forward for a vote? Mm -mm. Hearing none, Madam Superintendent, we'll receive your recommendation. Madam Chair, I recommend the board approve a total of 41 consent agenda items beginning with number 4.01 and ending with 14.01 as presented. Thank you. Board members, are there any items that you wish to pull for discussion and separate vote? Any items you wish to comment on? I want to make a general comment. A general comment, Ms. Hilson, on number... Just, just in general, I just uh, would like to speak uh, about what we're watching with the renewal of the charter schools, that I'm very cautious in watching the transportation piece to make sure that all means all and all students are transported appropriately, whether it's one of our public schools or one of the charter schools, that some methodology is in place for transportation of all students in St. Lucie County that choose to go other than the parents transporting, that there should be something in place. And that is very concerning to me, so I just want that to be a general comment. Thank you, Ms. Hilson. Hearing no others, we will, we've received the recommendation. Board members, are there, do I hear a motion? Second. Moved by Ms. Hilson, second by Dr. Mills. All in favor? Aye. Aye. N any opposed? Motion carries 3-0. And now our other items of business, Madam Superintendent. Yes, ma'am. I recommend um, the board approve the final order for student expulsion case number 14-015 as presented. Board members, we have the recommendation. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Moved by Ms. Hilson. Second. Second by Dr. Mills. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 3-0. On to our stipulated findings. Yes, ma'am. I recommend the board approve stipulated findings of fact, conclusions of law and penalty, and final orders number 415 through 425 as presented. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. Board members, we have a recommendation. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Moved by Ms. Hilson. Second. Second by Dr. Mills. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 3-0. And now, Madam Superintendent, it is opportunity for your update. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure to um, recognize a few individuals who have just been granted uh, positions through the consent agenda. And so that's probably the reason we have a nice showing this evening in the audience. So thank you, ladies. Um, we'll begin with our new principal appointments, beginning with Mrs. Uh, Pam Holmes, who will, has been appointed principal C.A. Moore Elementary. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board Members, and Superintendent Yost. I stand before you this evening honored by your confidence and my ability to lead Chester A. Moore Elementary School. I am excited about the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead as I am committed to the beliefs, vision, and mission of the district and at the school level. 
It is indeed a privilege to be the instructional leader of this vibrant and caring community, working in partnership with our team of talented staff, promising students, and our parents. My parents, in their words and deeds, told me that education was the key to success. Their message was reinforced by scores of teachers, mentors, and role models, some of which are in this room this evening. I have always been proud of St. Lucie Public Schools. My father was a 1942 graduate of Fort Pierce High School, now Fort Pierce Magnet School of the Arts. Both my husband and I attended St. Lucie Public Schools, as did our children. Our three grandchildren are currently enrolled in St. Lucie Public Schools as well. I would like to thank my family for their support and patience as they know that school is a huge part of my life. Professionally, I have been fortunate to have outstanding leadership in my school career who have taught, shaped, and inspired me. Thank you to my principals, Jerry McPherson, Debbie Snyder, Dr. David Washington, Keith Davis, and Felicia Nixon. And for those of you that are not aware, when Felicia moved to St. Lucie County, we taught fourth grade next door to each other. So how ironic that we were brought back together 16 years later, and I've had the good fortune of working with Felicia for the past three years, and I am fortunate and grateful for her leadership. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my assistant principals, Dr. Chris Taylor, Dr. Kevin Perry, Juanita Wright, Cortina Bell Gray, and Felicia Nixon for their guidance and support. As I begin my new role, I will stay the course and continue to focus on student achievement and high expectations for every child. I am deeply committed to St. Lucie Public Schools and the role they play in the community. Thank you for this tremendous honor. Thank you, Mrs. Holmes, and we are looking forward to your leadership at Chester A. Moore. Also uh, appointed this evening was Mrs. Carrie Wallakevitz, appointed as principal to Rivers Edge Elementary. Mrs. Wallakevitz. I don't know that I'll be quite as brief, but I will try. Um, good evening, um, Madam Board or Madam Chair, Board Members, Superintendent Yost. Thank you so much for this amazing opportunity. You have no idea how excited I am to be going to Rivers Edge Elementary. Some of you may not know, but Rivers Edge really has significant meaning to my family and me. It was where I completed my student teaching 19 years ago. And it was during that time that the St. Lucie Elementary students became Rivers Edge Elementary students. And we all rode on a caravan across town to our new location. And the students and the teachers were so excited to arrive together in their new classrooms. And I feel honored to have been a part of that and honored to be going back home. Uh, my mother-in-law was also a part of the Rivers Edge community. She was one of the first Success for All facilitators. And believe it or not, it's where my husband and I first met. As I look around the room tonight, I see faces of many who have guided me along my educational journey. And I want to thank all of you for being my sounding board, a listening ear, and for all the great advice. I would also like to acknowledge excuse me, some special people in the room tonight, my husband Jimmy. Together we've accomplished so much. I did not think it was possible, but I do love you more today than I did on the day we said I do. You are my rock, and without you, I would not be standing here today. To my beautiful children, Emily and James, you make me so proud, and I love you beyond measure. My father-in-law, Jim, thank you for always being there for all of us. I could not have wished for a better father or grandfather for my children. Liz, Lizzie McGuire, thanks for letting me choose you. To my Osprey family, thanks for supporting me during the past four years. I will miss you all so much. Mrs. Peterson, your patience, trust, and unconditional love knows no bounds. You truly are a remarkable woman. Miss J, I would not want to weather a storm with anyone but you. We will forever be K squared. Mr. Kumo, thank you for eight amazing years at Forest Grove. You have inspired not only me, but thousands of others in St. Lucie County. Thank you for being a father figure, a mentor, and most importantly, a friend. To my new Rivers Edge family, I'm honored and excited to be working with such a talented and dedicated staff. I believe in you, I believe in us, and I'm looking forward to a bright future with much success. 
Madam, board, or Madam Chair, board members, Mrs. Yost, thank you for putting your trust in me and providing me this incredible opportunity. I will do my best to make you proud. Thank you, Mrs. Wallakevitz. We know you're going to be a fabulous leader for that River's Edge family. As we appointed Mrs. Holmes, she mentioned Mrs. Felicia Nixon. If we could get Mrs. Nixon to stand, she is transferring to Dan McCarty Middle School as our principal. Could you stand, please, Mrs. Nixon? And the former principal at Dan McCarty Middle School is Dr. David Washington. If you could stand, Dr. Washington. He is transferring to the position of Director of Recruitment and Retention. Also in the audience, I see Mrs. Heather Stanford, who is being appointed as the Assistant Principal at Dan McCarty Middle School. I do not see our other assistant principals appointed this evening. However, we'll mention them. Mrs. Vincia Gavoni will be, has been appointed to Fort Pierce Magnet School of the Arts. Dominic Clayton to Fort Pierce Westwood High School, as well as Valerie Hall at Sam Gaines Academy. So we applaud all of those individuals in their new leadership positions. Additionally, there are um, two new district administrators who are unable to be with us this evening because they're already beginning their new um, exploration of responsibilities. They are on their way to Gainesville for a conference in executive leadership, um, trying to foster and promote the um, abilities of our principals, and they will be supervising 16 principals each this year. Congratulations to our two executive directors of schools. Mrs. Pam Dampier and Mrs. Uh, Lydia Martin. So we congratulate them in their absence. All of our vacancies have not been filled at this point. We have a couple, two principal vacancies and four assistant principal vacancies to fill at this time. Interviews are underway um, at this time and those will be coming before the board shortly. As you hear about the many new positions within the district, I just want to reinforce the fact that we are redesigning um, and revising our organizational chart. There will be fewer um, assistant superintendents on our chart. We have not replaced um, Dr. Rendell. He was a former assistant superintendent of schools. That position will remain vacant as well as Dr. Rendell will be transferring to oversee the position um, of human resources development. And so that is an assistant principal position that is being vacated at this time and remain vacant. Um, additionally, we have had some changes in title as well as salaries to some degree. And so all of that will come forward to the board during our work session. There was a promise to minimize the um, district level administration as well as provide superior service to the students of St. Lucie County and we are doing our best to make certain that that occurs. So there will be more to come in that respect. Also wanted to mention recruitment and retention. Um, at the last board meeting, there was message um, delivered to us regarding the abundance of um, non reappointments for this current school year. We have taken a look at that and there were 93 non-renewals at this uh, this year because of certification issues. Those non-renewals um, occurred and will probably be rehired, those individuals, as soon as they can remedy the deficiency in their certificate, will have every opportunity to be rehired within the district. And many of those are awaiting review and um, reappointment for a July board agenda. There were also 84 non-renewals um, for reasons other than certification. That's 22 fewer non-renewals in the area um, of reason other than certification compared to last year, and that's less than 3% of the total teaching population for St. Lucie County. So I wanted you all to have that information as we move forward. 
Additionally, um, there is some recruitment going on at this time. The Florida Teach-In is underway, and we have 15 schools attending the Teach-In. We have already issued, through recruitment efforts, 73 pre-contract binders, and those individuals are um, clearing the, the process of application and screening and will be appointed in the coming um, weeks with board meetings. We have two board meetings coming up the end of July. All right. As we proceed, I'm glad to see that Carly Fabricant had just come in because we now have a presentation under the superintendent's update, an annual wellness program report for the 2013-14 school year. So welcome, Ms. Fabricant, to the podium. And while Carly is preparing, let me announce um, the fact that she prepared and submitted an application for an award to SUNSPRA. Um, and that stands for Sunshine State School Public Relations Association. We were pleased to learn at the FASA conference last week that we were awarded a first place Sunshine Medallion Award for our wellness program. So congratulations to Carly for our wellness efforts within St. Lucie County. And we will share that plaque at the conclusion of the presentation. I believe Carly was conducting a class immediately I was. prior to tonight's um, <laughs> so meeting. I so. And Carly, we want you to know that we're only 18 minutes into the meeting. We're not at our hour where we need to stand up and do some exercises. Okay. <laughs> Keep us on task, okay? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me tonight. Good evening. Um, I wanted to give you a summary of the past year um, with the wellness program. Okay. Um, this is similar to what I did last year, and so I'll kind of talk about how it compares to our results from last year. So with our Weight Watchers program, Weight Watchers comes on site um, to do, uh, to hold meetings at different locations. And so we had 60, uh, 60 participants in the fall and 58 in the spring, which is similar to last year, a little bit more. And total pounds lost between the summer, fall, and spring um, semesters is 1,327 pounds, which is a little bit more than last year. And we had 35 participants that have enrolled for the summer program, which is starting this week. For our group fitness classes, um, this tends to be one of our most popular programs. We have about 10 employees at 10 per class, and there's 15 to 20 classes that go on during the year um, throughout the district in Zumba, yoga, and boot camp. Staff sports is another one of our more popular programs. This past year we had, we did softball, soccer, and tennis, and we also had a one-day kickball tournament, and so that also tends to bring in a lot of participants. With our incentive program, the numbers seem to also be pretty um, consistent with bronze, silver, and gold prizes. And this year we had for our royalty prize, it's actually 12 now. I had one more who finished theirs today. So um, 12 participants. We had eight last year get the royalty prize of a $50 insurance credit. And so that was 12 this year. That was more this year. For preventative screenings this year, we had the Mammo Van from Jupiter Medical Center come to three locations. And we had about 40 participants total who took advantage of the, the mammograms um, on the van. And we also did off-site skin cancer screenings at the dermatology offices. And we had two events for St. Lucie West K-8 and the district office, and about, as well, 40 participants. For disease management classes, which is where I just came from, uh, diabetes prevention program is going very well. We had three classes last spring, and we have three classes this year. And we've had about 50 people go through that program, which is excellent. In our diabetes management program, we had three, this is a two-hour class versus the prevention class is a, a year-long process. For diabetes management, we had four locations this past year with about 35 participants um, attending. And the chronic disease self-management class, which is a six-week class, 
We held that this year uh, one time at South Compound, and we had six bus drivers participate in that program. Our employee health fairs, which occur every January, we had four this year. We had seven the, the year before, but we had did four this year, and we had just over 200 employees participate. And our top risk factors seem to be consistent with diabetes, inactivity, being overweight or obese, and poor nutrition. Something new that was implemented this year to try and capture more of that information and because of the health fairs and how limited they were in the locations of what we could do this year. So we held nine mini health fairs throughout the district and we screened them for osteoporosis, blood sugar, blood pressure, body fat, and um, did vision screenings. And this was about 25 to 50% of employees at each site participated, which is tremendous. Something else that we added new this year, student dietitians from Kaiser University did rotations with me, and they went out to about 30 locations throughout the district, and a total of 300 to 400 participants sat with them for a half hour and got some nutrition counseling. We also held cooking classes, and we had about 10 this past year, and about 60 participants um, participated in the cooking classes. Walking paths, my goal for this year was to have a walking path at each one of our locations, and we did come closer to that. We now have 32 paths across the district, so I'm hoping by this next year to, to finish up the last 10 or so. So now we have 32, and um, hopefully to be able to use that more, those walking paths more in the future. We also do flu vaccines at every location in the fall, and that will continue. For health education, we have the Wellness Wednesday emails. Those go out each week during the year. And there's some topics that we covered this past year. I try to vary the topics that are covered um, to see what of it would be of interest to somebody. And once a month, there are newsletters that also focus on various health topics. Here at the district office, we have lunch and learn lectures throughout the year. And those are some of the topics that we covered this year. And we have about 10 participants per lecture. Webinars were also available. Some of these topics were available by webinar. And if not these topics, other topics on stress management and eating healthy and lowering your cholesterol are available. And we use MHNet, um, their website, as well as Florida Blue. They all have webinars available to us as well. So moving on to meetings and presentations, school visits. I do visit the three transportation compounds several times throughout the year and um, do face-to-face -face meetings and brief presentations to them about what is available to them and what health concerns they might have. I assisted Dan McCarty in an employee fitness challenge and we are working on getting and maintaining garden, school gardens. I know the number of schools that, are have, that have gardens was requested. I don't have that number right now. Some of them have been are available, some of them are being maintained, some of them are just getting started, so I'll have clearer numbers hopefully um, in the fall when we get back and can gather that data. But we do have a resource for school gardens for any gar school that wants to have one um, that is available to them. The, the, the maintenance of it and the development of it is a free service that is available to us. As far as meetings, um, we were present in a DAC meeting this year just to update them on the School Health Advisory Committee and also the Wellness Program, um, a few staff meetings, maintenance department meetings, uh, safety meetings, um, some health day, health days, career days, um, and new orientation hire, new hire orientations every month. I do sit on the School District Employee Wellness Committee for the state. And this just in the past month became a certified uh, wellness manager and a master trainer for diabetes prevention to help our grow, us grow our program here at the district. There's a, a, a community partnership that is made up of other wellness managers and coordinators throughout the county that I do participate in so we can, so we can share ideas. We also organized and hosted three tobacco-free holidays, National Apple Crunch Day, National Wear Red Day in February, and Walk at Lunch Day in April. That's sponsored by Florida Blue. And also implemented the 5210 program into the workplace 
this is typically a, it's really a, a, a program for children and, and child health, but there is a workplace wellness component that is being implemented in our district. Some other events um, hosted in um, the notebook, so presence on the notebook, um, prevents, presence on the talk show, hosted quarterly wellness committee meetings, um, presence in the School Health Advisory Council and the St. Lucie County Tobacco Partnership. We have had wellness champions at 39 schools and locations this past year. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them either are being transferred to other schools or have um, decided to step down from their position. So we'll need to recruit more champions um, this fall because they are definitely an essential piece to communicating the information about the wellness program at the school level. I work with IRSC and Kaiser um, with their health management and dietetics program um, with their student interns who help develop a lot of the projects and um, any other tasks that I can do you know, to give them to help the program grow. Some accomplishments this past year, the coordinated school health Assessment is a two-year, every two years you have to complete this assessment. So we completed it in 2012, and we had silver level, and we just completed it again this year. And we also got silver, but we got just below a gold, so we're, we're right there on the cusp. So while we did not reach gold this year, we did definitely jump up a, a great percentage, which is very commendable. And that covers anything from food service to health, um, health services, PE, um, psychological counseling, family community involvement, staff wellness encompasses all of those aspects. So we have the um, second year in a row, the Gold Level Fit Friendly Award from American Heart Association. And because of that, we are also recognized by the State Surgeon General as a Florida Fit Friendly Company in his, in his uh, Healthiest Weight Initiative. We were a top 10 finalist for the South Florida Business Journal Healthiest Employer Award for large companies. And as Ms. Jos mentioned, we received first place um, for our wellness annual report. This past year, the, the whole district became a part of the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. This is an initiative by the Bill Clinton Foundation and the American Heart Association to try and get schools healthier. There also is a staff component of this. So we had to host three workshops this past year and the schools at their own level had to complete inventories and action plans of what they wanted to improve at, the, at their school as far as um, the health and wellness of students and staff. So we had 83% of our schools complete the inventories and out of those 83%, 51% of them have completed action plans. So for those schools that have not done so, they will be doing that in the, in the fall to complete um, that process. We received two more grants. Um, we're in the process of them right now, actually, is receiving two more grants for chronic disease, uh, diabetes prevention from the state. And this one, these two grants are focusing on increasing physician referrals to our programs, you know, so our, the physicians of our employees, working with them to get them to refer our employees back to us for chronic disease programs, and also to increase the number of participants in the programs. The need, there was a needs assessment, annual needs assessment that was completed just this past semester, and 15% of our employees completed it. The, the consensus from these surveys was the most effective programs this past year were the employee health fairs, the walking paths, the wellness, leaders, wellness newsletters, and the on-site exercise classes. And this is pretty consistent um, with last year's results. Future interests are more yoga classes at um, on site at, at the schools, um, volleyball, kickball, running clubs, and more variety in group fitness classes offered. That's been a goal of mine too. It's difficult to find group fitness instructors in this county that can come out to our schools. Um, and Zumba and yoga are pretty popular, but we would like to offer some classes that are a little bit different for those who don't have an interest in, in that. Maybe there would be something else that they can, they can do, like a self-defense or a light, a light exercise class. Consistent with last year, about 44% of our employees are getting zero to two hours of exercise each week. 
So almost half are not getting enough exercise. About half feel that they make sound nutritional decisions. They can get enough sleep, manage their stress, and maintain a healthy weight. And a large percentage read the Wellness Wednesday emails, which is great. And most feel that the wellness program is doing a good job of encouraging them and providing a variety of programs to meet everyone's needs. Now, plans for 2014-2015 school year is to add a greater variety of the on-site group fitness class options. The dietitians that I worked with at Kaiser have now graduated and have received their license, and we'll be hiring some of them as vendors to provide, do more nutrition education on-site um, with lectures, individual counseling, grocery store tours, and cooking classes. In addition to working with the dietetics program, we'll be looking into um, the massage therapy program and the nursing program and how those students could benefit our, our school district. And because of the success of the mini health fairs this past semester, looking at holding a one health fair at each location throughout the year. Uh, more diabetes prevention, management, and chronic disease courses, and also targeting dependents and retirees who, might, who are contributing to our insurance, we want to get them healthy as well. So reaching out to them to see if they would like to join the program. Once we have walking paths at every school and location, possibly doing some walking challenges between the schools to get more use out of those paths. We are fortunate to be able to use Florida Blue's website for our incentive program starting next year, which is going to um, ease the use of it to hopefully attract more people to the incentive program, and also developing a new prize structure to entice them to participate more in the incentive program. In the fall, we'll be doing a high blood pressure challenge. So for those who have high blood pressure, they can um, get assistance in, in lowering their blood pressure. Uh, a mental health month that highlights services that are available and identifies employees that are in need of, of services. Uh, free health kits, such as um, tobacco, you know, tobacco cessation kit or um, a diabetes kit or a weight loss kit, something along those lines, giving them the, the tools that they can um, then help to achieve whatever the goals are um, with that issue. We're going to be working more on success stories to highlight the great successes that we have here in the district. We have some of them tonight that are going to speak for just a minute on, on the changes that they've made, but I think it would be great to highlight once a week somebody in the district who's had success because I know they're out there. So if they'd like to do so, then we would love to hear their story. We're going to be working on the vending, food vending machines for the employees. I know food services works on the ones for the students, but um, somebody needs to work on the ones for the employees, so I'm going to be tackling that this year. Uh, we'll be doing a cookbook fundraiser. We're helping diabetic employees with their testing supply costs to help lower that and get that under control. And also creating a web, a web page on our website that can be viewed by employees and also potential employees that might want to come into our district, let them know what the benefits are with the wellness program. And now I'd like, I have a few people that are here today that would like to speak um, regarding their success in the wellness program. Hi, my name is Liz Letcher and I teach at Port St. Lucie High. Um, a few, two years ago I went, I must have got one of Carly's emails and I wanted to get the $50 credit on my health insurance. So I just said, well, I'll submit, I'm an exercise freak I like to exercise, Denise Rodriguez pointed out. <laughs> so um, I just submitted that to Carly and I got a, um, a dietitian session and I lost 30 pounds. And I just, thank you, I just, it's just, I think that's what the nudge that I needed because I teach PE so I know exactly what to do but sometimes you need that nudge. So I'm pretty sure that that's the nudge I needed and I've kept it off for six months now after the year I lost it. Um, I was asked by my principal to be the wellness champion and um, we've got, I've got two people, well not me, but two people quit smoking be, just because of the wellness program. That's probably the biggest hurdle. And um, we have a thriving group fitness program. I've got two days a week of Zumba that 
that um, 12 ladies pay $6 a week to do Zumba at school that they would normally not do. And that's more than I pay to go to a gym. And um, we've got a teacher that teaches at school. She um, agreed to teach yoga for free for stress relief. And I've got 25 um, teachers that have increased their exercise level and um, a lot of others that we've entered points and they've won prizes. And I've um, reached royalty both both years. So um, it's not that hard. Just everything you do, I told them just every doctor's appointment you have in the summer, just shoot it to Carly and then and you get the, the prize. So I feel it's been very ben beneficial to me. So that's why I wanted to speak and thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. Hello, my name is Jennifer Scipioni, and I'm a fourth grade teacher at White City Elementary. I was the wellness champion, and before that, I participated in one of the chronic disease management courses with my mother-in-law, and that's how Carly got me interested on the wellness program. I always read the emails, and you know, was, I'm always been on, big on fitness, being an ex-gymnast, and getting into it. So I agreed to be the wellness champion at my school, and through that part. I organized a walk and bike to school event after school for the students and staff and the students were able to come. They got free helmets. Uh, Carly set up her own table where parents can go over and speak to her about the nutrition and different items. They had fun activities and I had a lot of students coming up to me afterwards, months afterwards, going, when are we having another walk and bike to school event? You know, when I did activities in my classroom with the comic books that we got from Florida Blue, where now all my students wanted to be habit heroes, and they made up cool names for vegetables and fruits, and they were telling me stories about what they've done with their younger siblings, on how they're trying to make them their sidekicks since they're the hero. Their younger sister and sibling have younger brother or sister. They need to be the sidekicks. And it's been a wonderful and exciting year where I've been really excited to participate. And even if I'm not a wellness champion next year, I'm still going to help Carly with the program. A few people could not be here today, so I just want to really quickly read. They wrote down for me just very quickly. Um, one person had mentioned to me that something that they read in the newsletter just made them decide to seek medical attention for it because they recognized some symptoms in, in one of the illnesses I had mentioned um, to look for and because of that was able to identify a health issue that she would not have normally seeked out. So she was very um, appreciative of that. The tips on better sleep and um, the cooking classes and the staff sports was, um, was highly praised. And then one, one other person had talked to me about her cholesterol level that it was um, very high and she didn't know what to do about it um, and then she joined one of our prevention programs and has was able to lower it to below what the recommended level is so she wanted to make sure that that was mentioned and if it wasn't for joining the prevention class she would not have been able to achieve that because she wouldn't have known what to do so I just want to mention that I appreciate you allowing me to the time to speak tonight is there any questions I just wanted to say thank you for your contribution to St. Lucie County. I do believe we are a healthier district as a result of the many opportunities afforded employees and students. Thank you. Ms. Hilson? Um, as a member of the Wellness Board, it's actually a meeting I'd love to go to because we actually accomplish a lot. And it's because of Carly's leadership, and she's so open to everything and every idea because you have all the different people giving you ideas. But I think Kim Pennington said, gee, we're a lot different since before, you know, she was making a joke, BC, um, before Carly came. So things have changed remarkably since you've come and it's what we we looked at it for years and it's not cost neutral as as far as the fact that we are getting healthier which is going to eventually help with our insurance and I mean but it's also the human factor we have people that are I think that we have found out through some of the workshops and so forth that they have been close to a heart attack or had some really serious health issues you've been able to um, 
help with with our specialists that see them. So I just personally thank you because you do above and beyond, Carly. You do a great job. Dr. Mills? Well, Carly, you, has, you have convinced us that um, we are a school district that is on the rise in regards to our health. And it was very encouraging to hear all that we have out here as a district, especially for those teachers that um, educators that want to that are looking for teaching positions. I'm sure that is going to really encourage so many. But on um, more serious note, I'm sure you're saving lives because there are employees out there that are diabetics that uh, do have high blood pressure and other issues, chronic issues. And, and I believe we're saving lives. And you're doing a tremendous job. The presentation was excellent. I mean, I don't know how you have the time to do all of this that you've done, but I'm glad we have you. Now, I have a question. Are any of these programs or classes, do any of them cost or are they all free? Most of them are free. Um, Weight Watchers to come on site is a cost, for instance, but I do subsidize a portion of it with the, the grants that I receive. Um, but most of them are free, I'll just put it that way. All the disease prevention ones, diabetes and chronic disease, those are all free to our employees. And all the exercise classes as well? A low, very low cost. Very low cost, okay. Well, thank you very much for your work here. Um, and, and even the part of the testimonies, the success stories that we heard today, uh, when I heard the one about in getting the kids enthused and wanting to be healthier uh, and having healthier educators for our children, um, I'm really excited about it. You'll probably see more of me in the next year. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Carly, one thing I wanted to mention, too, that you, you didn't really allude to in your report, but one thing that was a result of your leadership pushing it forward is that this year, for the first year, we were able to be a tobacco-free school zone. All our buildings, all our facilities, everywhere. Um, and I am most proud and appreciative of your efforts on behalf of that. And quite personally, I thank you for getting me back on the tennis courts. <laughs> <laughs> so you've, you've touched lives in, in all aspects of our district, and you've made lives healthier. And we are very, very appreciative of that. So thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. If I could ask our board members, all three of you, if you don't mind, to step down and um, take a photo with Carly for, as she receives her first place award. We'll place our plaque in a prominent location. What I neglected to do after recognizing especially our two principals for appointment, I didn't ask their families and friends to stand. Could I ask you to do that this evening? You came all this way to support Mrs. Holmes and Mrs. Wallachevitz. If you could stand at this time. Thank you for being here. They're going to need your support day in and day out for the, year, the days ahead. So thank you so much for being here this evening and in the days and months ahead. Also wanted to thank our um, principals, Principal Rust Day and Rodriguez, along with teacher leader Siobhan Silas and um, Nardi Routon, along with Mark Roleski and Sue Renew. The team presented at the FASA conference in Tampa last week, and what a phenomenal presentation it was. Um, not to sell our principals or administrators short, but our teachers truly stole the show as they focused on our St. Lucie County framework for quality teaching and learning and talked about the difference that the um, elements of our framework had on them as they ref uh, reflected and perfected their craft. And so it was nice to have Ms. Silas and Ms. Routon in attendance sharing with other educators 
members the benefits of, um, that they have seen with their work with R Mark Roleski over the past year. So thanks to that entire team for a fabulous presentation. We appreciated that. That includes my report. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. We like those reports that have so much good news <laughs> as we move forward. Um, we will move now to our school board members' reports, and Ms. Hilson, we'll begin with you tonight. Just uh, thank you for the training. We were able to be at the lunch portion for It's Your Ship, and it really made me think a lot. I had been laughing and talking to some educators before the lunch and before we went in and I said remember when Dr. Vogel was here and we did the training on who moved your cheese and we really talked about humility and and that really brought it back because the speaker was amazing and he did speak about humility and you know we are here to serve we're not here to be served so I, I personally enjoyed that greatly um, the other thing I wanted to mention was Port St. Lucie High School and Cinderella Patrick Madden is a genius, and I can say that because my mom's a retired music teacher, and she said Patrick's a genius. So, but <laughs> we love him so much, and we, we're just so blessed to have him in our community. Because I mean, think of the children, teenagers, teachers, all the lives, families that he has touched over the years. I mean, some of the programs he's done, I think, have like very young children all the way up into the the high school age. But I, I've known families that have participated over the years with Port St. Lucie High and the programs, and the kids take away so much more than just, you know, if we could just take this to our legislators. It's just not reading, writing, and arithmetic. We are so much more than that in St. Lucie County. And I, I a special shout out to Patrick. Cinderella was amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hilson. Dr. Mills? Just to kind of piggyback off of what Carol was saying, um, I, I, I did not get to see the Cinderella thing that went got past me, so I didn't get to go, but I um, love the arts and understand how much the arts connect with uh, our academics and how important it is, and also our social skills. Uh, I was at some, uh, a program recently for a uh, 50 year anniversary at Lincoln Park Academy, and just wanted to make mention of the choir that day sung a song that has not left me yet okay that makes a difference and and we talk about making the difference in our children lives we hear things and and those some of those things really stick and there was a song that they sung that day um, that really stuck with me every single day I get up and I hear that song so that's how tremendous how important the arts are in our schools regarding our children as well as everyone. We're all better people because of it. So thank you for all that you do in St. Lucie County in the arts. And I would be remiss if I didn't add my accolades to the Port St. Lucie High School drama production as well. Cinderella was fabulous. I had um, two little ones with me this time and the joy of watching them, watching all of our students on stage was just really phenomenal and the questions they would ask, you know, and she's really just in high school and it, it was just, our students are such great role models for our younger students and when they see them, see the opportunities for to perform in something like Cinderella, it's just, it's phenomenal. And I say every time it rivals anything on Broadway. We certainly have our own Broadway right here in St. Lucie County. Um, and thanks to Mrs. Yost as well for the invitation to attend the district leadership luncheon. Captain Abersham was indeed a delight to listen to and I think all that were in attendance really left their feeling refreshed and revitalized and on track to, to keep our ship moving forward. I want to thank Bill Tomlinson for twice this year we've had a meetings with PBIS and multi-tiered student support um, through the University of South Florida. They've come and met with a large group and thank you for pulling that group together, for keeping it going because we really are doing good things with PBS, PBIS in our schools now. Um, you've got a fabulous staff that works very hard at that and I know that all of our schools just from the data we looked at that day showed great results for when it's implemented with fidelity what a difference it makes in our classrooms and in our schools. So thank you, Bill, for that. 
And then just to wish everyone a wonderful, wonderful 4th of July. If you have any service people in your family, please remember to thank them um, in your neighborhoods. We are here today because of the people that have served our country in all the years in the past and will continue to serve honorably. So remember that. Um, have a great, great fourth and hope to see you again at our next meeting, which will be July 8th um, as a special work session. I do want one moment of privilege, I think, um, at this point. I would like to ask Sue Renew to stand. This is her last official board meeting with us. Um, she's going into retirement. Um, I understand to be a grandmother more at heart, and I applaud you for that, Sue. There's not a greater calling in life, I'm sure. So thank you, Sue, for your years of service. You have touched so many lives, students, adults, families. Um, thank you for your service, and we wish you only the best in your retirement. Thank you. Well, we have any unscheduled speaker? Well, having no other business to come before us, we are adjourned.